Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I'm hoping this is going to work. Here we go. So I'm Andrea Ellison, and, and thank you very much for that introduction. Um, yes, quite a unique background, really. Um, but we at the Ground Source Heat Pump Association decided that we needed to establish a, a full education and training group. And my colleagues who are on screen now, Laura Bishop, Paul Leadham, Andy Louth, Chris Davidson, are the other members of this group. And between us, um, we've devised a scheme of work which uh, sort of incorporates education and training for all ages. And I'm talking there from infant children to actually as old as you want to be. Um, that might sound a little bit too good to be true, or even an April Fool's Day joke, but hopefully in the next hour, you'll see that we've put together a very robust education package, to be honest, which continues to be a work in progress for us. Um, education, um, it creates change. Uh, and if you just stop and think about that phrase for a minute, education creates change. That, that's quite a phrase, really. Um, and how powerful has education been in what you're doing now in your life? Um, my contribution to the group has been to write schemes of work for school aged children. So I'm work writing schemes of work from age two to GCSE. And it's been quite a challenge, but it's been quite a lot of fun uh, putting together my two passions, which are teaching and the industry that we're in. But before I begin, um, I'd like you to note that there are actually two types of education here. And my belief is that what we are doing here provides options for making a living and teaching people how to live, as James Adams wrote in 1878, between 1878 and 1949 at some point. Over the centuries, education has been recorded as being the hope of nations and the world and that has some bearing really on what we're doing working within the Ground Source Heat Pump Association and the heat pump industry. If you look at those two quotes there, Erasmus and Medella were born 450 years apart, but their message was still the same. And it's still the same today. And a couple of years ago, Boris caught me up in my belief in how I believe the future of education system should be. Um, he went back to school, as you can see, and the two styles of learning that we just mentioned in Adams's quote appear to be summarized as academic and practical in his quote here on the screen. I agree, everything is ultimately a skill and we have a duty to teach those skills within our industry. Boris is now showing some commitment to it and when he expanded the apprenticeship program in 2020 and was seen with heat pumps in October 2020 and Whilst the renewable heat incentive finished yesterday, there is some limited commitment towards heat pumps and we are really hoping that will increase. And it's crucial that those who inherit the earth and the legacy that we leave behind must be prepared in how to make it better. Um, they are the employees and consumers of tomorrow and they've inherited a very broken planet and they deserve to be better educated in how to rectify and repair that. And to work on fixing the broken planet, Andy, Paul, Chris, Laura and myself have been working on our education and training packages to teach and educate people of all ages of how they can make those repairs. We will briefly introduce it to you within this webinar and, and should you require further information, do not hesitate to contact us um, and the address will appear also on our final slide, but the email address is right there on screen now. Okay, so what have I done? Well, I've designed some work, Our Earth, Use It, Don't Abuse It. And it's aimed at teaching about the importance of using the earth as a renewable energy source and not abusing it by using non-renewable energy sources. They all deliver within many areas of the national curriculum scheme. And I've done it within each case stage. And I'm really hopeful that one day I can get that into a GCSE as well at some point. And the T level, once our apprenticeships are up and running. So I'm running in key stage one, which is infants, key stage two, which is juniors, key stage three, lower senior, and key stage four, which is higher senior. Okay. They've all been written 
for a half term or six weekly lessons. I've written them so that the teachers can use them in isolation within subjects such as science, geography, or even uh, citizenship. But I'm hoping that some might expand it as a topic or a theme for half a term. And that then would allow for that extra increased cross-curricular experience, such as debate, research, all that sort of stuff. In year two, which is top infants, we begin by considering four of the five basic requirements for life, clean air, water, nutrients, and warm shelter. The children learn about what happens if they misuse energy. They examine the effects of the sun, and the air in positive and negative terms. You know, they're going to get sunburned, maybe, you know, as the part of the negative. And then they examine how they keep warm in their schools and at home. Homework activities encourage children to include their families and hopefully prompt discussion at home about the energy choices that they make. And they can be linked to nutrition. And an example I always give there is I talk about the days when I was teaching, I used to use a, a, a solid glue stick, of 30 grams to show the 30 grams of fat in a, in a takeaway burger, that sort of a thing. At the end of this scheme, there's a, a, a who wants to be a millionaire PowerPoint, and that can go home for them to play at home with their families. In year five or six, there's a shift of emphasis from the basic requirements of life to where local, national and international energy comes from what the carbon footprint means, the effects of air quality on climate change and global warming. They're introduced to green technologies at this stage and whether those renewable energies are a possible solution to climate change and global warming in their opinions. And again, we have a who wants to be a millionaire quiz to take home. I did write another version for Upper Key Stage 2, which is very specific for when a company is installing a ground source heat pump at a school. And it's much more specific in referring to ground source and local to the area the installation is actually taking place. So we do more geology studies on that area, that sort of thing. And it also shows adaptations to what um, type of heat pump is being installed. So if it was air source or water source, that, that scheme can be adapted to suit that. Year nine, or lower senior school, extends that work of years two and five, and it introduces the decarbonisation of heat, heat pumps as the future heating and cooling resource, and it concludes with career opportunities within the renewable energy industry. Um, the scheme needs to be delivered prior to GCSE options being made, which is why I put it in year nine, because to me, the careers is absolutely crucial to get these students before those choices are actually made. Um, but I'll come back to that in a tick. Year 11 is a forerunner to what Paul and Andy were working on in their training piece, which will follow shortly. And as I said before, I really want this to become a, a practical apprentice type GCSE, if that's even possible. And I'd love to try and take that somewhere with the right people, but I'm not too sure who at the moment. Okay. Go back to careers. This is quite lengthy now, and it's intentionally lengthy slide this one, because I want to really highlight where the careers are in our industry. We've got aftercare, which is servicing and maintaining systems, design consultancy with geology, siding heat pumps, designing borehole and ground arrays, civil engineering, mechanical engineering. We've got education. You could be a teacher, lecturer, a trainer in a school, a college, or other training establishment, or become involved in training in private sectors, such as builders and private landlords. You could be an advisor, an expert in educating social sectors, such as housing associations, councils, public trusts like NHS, and even be involved in trade bodies, such as the GSHPA. Installation. You could be owned or be employed by a heat pump installation company. It goes on and on and on, and it doesn't, you know, it's, it's limitless, really. And I've just lost my screen. Here we go. I think I've just gone back on my screen, haven't I? I'm just... Yes, I have, and I can't see how to go forward, folks. I really apologise for this. Hold on. 
sorry about this. Okay, year 11, what is ground source heating? Pete, uh, I've done that one. I'm really sorry, I'm messing up here. Hit the wrong key, embarrassing. Okay, so we've got apprenticeships um, that are coming up and we often say, why do colleges go for quick and easy route of gas? And we've got the apprenticeship and training program being launched. And Andy and Paul are the ones who are gonna take over from here. And I'm not too sure if Andy's actually with us. Um, Andy, are you with us today? I've just, I've just had a quick chat with Andy. Um, he's just having a bit of a, an issue with one of the vans, uh, other stuff. So if people just imagine that uh, as words come out of my mouth, Andy is pulling strings and I'm doing everything Andy wants me to. So morning, everybody. Uh, apprenticeships. So apprenticeships are something that Ground Source Heating Association have been working on with uh, MCS uh, and other industry bodies in, uh, in England. Uh, I think it's going to get released into Wales as well, not, not for Scotland at the moment. That's mainly down to, um, I think, there's issues with regards to uh, different frameworks for training, etc. I'm going to go into that detail, but... Apprenticeships at the moment, a lot of colleges across the UK, uh, they don't have the skills and the expertise with trainers to then deliver the, uh, the training that's necessary uh, for heat pumps. So as part of the apprenticeship that's been developed, uh, we're also going to be we're also going to be running a train the trainer session, which is like it says, training trainers. Um, and we want to we want to dispel this myth that where, where you've got apprentices that go to colleges. At the moment, we'll go to college and the, the college will say, actually, we've, um, we've, only got, um, we've only got gas that we can deliver for you. Uh, there's, no, there's no requirement or no one wants to do renewable technology. The college should be there to serve the local populace and the local, um, yeah, basically just, just you know, the local businesses, the local, um, the local economy. So... This is a drive to get that low carbon renewable technology uh, apprenticeship out there, and, it, and it's almost you know it's almost at sign off stage with Institute for Apprenticeships. So, in essence, what is the low carbon apprenticeship? When does it start? Next slide, please, Andrea. Um, so the apprenticeships start. Um, we were aiming for twenty twenty two, but it looks like it's going to be twenty twenty three when it starts, and it's also going to be a new occupational standard as well so for instance where you've got plumbing and people that are doing things to do with drains and toilets and things like that the occupational standard for for, for heat pumps is you know it, it's going to be the installation uh side of things where we concentrate all the periphery of skills around that um fusion welding and things like this it's going to be on ground source heat pumps solar thermal air source heat pumps and that occupational standard um will be ideally someone comes out of college with a ticket and says look this is this is my skill set this is what i can do then that aligns exactly with what, what we need for the industry instead of at the moment where apprenticeships were having to um create like false jobs and bogus jobs to get people through an apprenticeship where we have to show work on a sink or work on a toilet or something like that it's not the skill set that we need anymore not in this industry um Again, plumbing and heating will exist on its own. Uh, gas will exist on its own. We need our new occupational standard for what we're doing on air source, ground source, solar thermal. So next slide, please, uh, Andrea. So as I've mentioned, the key technologies, ground source heat pumps, air source heat pumps, solar thermal. Uh, up to previously, ground source heat pumps have been removed from the old apprenticeship pathways. Uh, we don't really have a, a reason why that was done. It was made unilaterally by, by a small group, got pushed out. So one of the big reasons for this is us pushing ground source heat pumps back into that apprenticeship, uh, giving it the place it deserves, along with air source, along with solar thermal. Uh, next slide, please. So the future as well, it's not just about the apprenticeships. Um, it's about upskilling. And it's about upskilling people that are already in industry as well. And it's not as simple as just training someone who's done gas and then throwing them into a, to a heat pump installation. There are a lot more skills around the periphery. And I, one example 
if you imagine um, managing a ground source heat pump project where there's drilling on there and your business then all of a sudden has to subcontract this and becomes you know, uh, responsible under construction design management um, requirements, etc. It's a whole new ball game. So one of the things Andrea and some of the others and, and myself every now and again have been involved in is, you know, a new drilling standard uh, under MCS, uh, which again, Ground Source Heat Pump Association have played a pivotal part in. But what we want to do is we want to drive a change towards eventually a competent person scheme in our industry. So if you think an electrician, competent person, gas competent person. At the moment, we don't have competent person schemes. Um, and, and what that allows is an industry to just, I suppose a business just have an individual that, that's passed the training course and then subcontract that out to really unskilled labor. And that's one thing we want to get away from. So this competent person scheme is something that we're working on in the background again, Ground Source Heat Pump Association, MCS. Um, and we want to reinstill some professionalism, passion and pride back into our industry because everyone seems to think that they can be a plumber at the moment because it's as easy as push fitting pipe together. And that's not the case. Um, so really, we, we eventually want this competent person scheme in our industry um, for, for control, really, and, and so that we, we don't have some of the nightmares and the problems that we've seen in industry where we have, you know, un uncontrolled installations. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, upskilling alignment, apprenticeship and upskilling alignment. So the apprenticeship is being used um, as, as a framework and a roadmap with the upskilling so that previously any upskilling training courses are ones that are in circulation within you know, England, Scotland, Wales at the moment. And I, I'm not sure if Northern Ireland used them, but um, we've got, um, We've got training that's basically academic that doesn't do any hands-on vocational work um, and it's, it's, it's really giving you the basic information with regards to heat pumps. What we want to do is we want to align what's going on in apprenticeships with upskilling and actually mix you know, the, the, the training that's delivered so it's audio, kinesthetic, uh, vis you know, visual. We, we've got hands-on training, vocational stuff along the side of the academic side of things. Um, and we want these qualifications to then become recognizable so that people enter industry, not just with a qualification, but with competence and confidence on the equipment that they're going to be working on. Um, and now I will pass over to my buddy who lives further north than I do, Chris, who will take you on a journey to the next stage for the modules of training. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Paul. Uh, actually, I only sound like I live further north than you do, but uh, yeah, thank you very much indeed for that introduction, Paul. So what I'm going to talk about uh, is the Ground Source Heat Pump Association Training Academy. Uh, I'm going to specifically talk about Stream 1, but the context of this is it lives within four streams. Uh, stream 1 is, as it says there, for consulting uh, for engineers, and we started the stream production in October 2021. Stream two will be about how a business repurposes to become a heat pump business from, say, a plumbing business. Stream three is the apprenticeship that Paul was talking about. And stream four is further down the line, which is all around uh, actually training to become a certified uh, ground loop designer, uh, such as myself. So if we can have the next slide, Andrea, we will talk about stream one in a little bit of detail. So. Uh, really what it, it's all about is a recognition that there's lack of access to good help and advice on ground source and access to that quality design practice and information is sparse. So what that tends to mean is that consulting engineers particularly will maybe assess ground source as a technology for a project using rules of thumb. Uh, and a, a group in North America actually uh, did a market analysis a few years ago, and they came up with a figure that about 80% of viable ground source projects are written off by poor application of rules of thumb in the industry. So that's a huge uh, barrier to entry for us. Other questions that people have, like who do we speak to? Uh, it is very straightforward. And the Ground Source Heat Pump Association have, have developed the training course to address all of the above. But what the course is not is a ground loop design course. That comes later. That's a, a, an, another stream, stream four, as I said earlier on. So next slide, please, Andrea. 
So what we're going to cover in the course is focus, obviously, on ground source heat pumps, and we'll talk about the types of systems. So it's a technology uh, uh, introduction. We'll talk about the different energy sources that are available for ground source, and then we're going to talk about the applications uh, of the technology. Next one, please, Andrea. Uh, and I guess the question is, who's it aimed at? Well, it's, it's quite a broad range, really. Uh, the primary focus has been around the consulting engineering community. Uh, but for example, energy managers in maybe you're in a housing association and you're an energy manager, you recognize ground source uh, as a useful technology to decarbonize and to reduce fuel poverty. Uh, you might be an architect, you might be a contractor looking to improve your, your skill set or understand what these people in ground source are talking to you about. So really, it's anyone involved in a net zero strategy planning for that uh, for the future. Andrea? So why get involved? Well, obviously, we've talked about the, the net zero ambition to 2050. Ground source heat pumps are a massive opportunity within the marketplace. My day job in Genius Energy Lab, we are extremely busy. And just to correct Niall earlier on, it's not 200 megawatts, it's about 550 megawatts uh, of installations that I've had my teams design over the years. That, that's, and, easily the, that's easily the scale of what's been installed on the island of Ireland. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Niall. Uh, and so it's a massive opportunity. You know, our business is incredibly busy. Uh, we are, you know, rushed out the door uh, with new projects and the market dynamics are really interesting in, uh, at the moment. So people are coming at this from different directions. So I'm building 1,200 apartments and I can't connect to gas. That conversation wasn't even happening uh, even 18 months ago, never mind two years ago. So it's a huge opportunity uh, for the industry. It also gives you the opportunity in doing, uh, sitting on these training courses to meet the industry experts. We've got some really good speakers uh, on the courses. And because of the way we're structuring the course, which I'll come back to in a sec, there's an opportunity to actually interact as well. Andrea? So how are we going to do it? it it's based on bite-sized chunk videos. So what we've done is quite a lot of research around the industry, IT industry, actually, for what's successful uh, programs are out there. And we've modeled these uh, on the likes of Adobe uh, with their content for learning to use their packages. So it's in bite-sized pre-recorded chunks. Uh, each chunk is between 10 minutes and 30 minutes long. And you'll see the topic list in just a second. As I say, they're pre-recorded. We've got some uh, very good studio facilities to record them in. And we will be following up those sessions with a live question and answer session. So every four or five sessions you actually watch online in your own time, you'll be offered a live question and answer session via our secure login uh, on the Ground Source Heat Pump Association website. And the topics, Andrea? I'm not going to read these out, uh, but we're going to cover everything from how you approach ground source as systems through what you need to understand in the building, the geology, will then actually demonstrate ground loop design so you've got a feeling for that. We talk about the hydraulics, the heat pumps themselves, how you work out efficiencies to then feed that into your reports with real efficiencies, not just what uh, the rule of thumb or the textbook says. And we'll end up going right the way through to controls and interfacing with the supply chain, which Paul uh, touched on earlier on is a very important part uh, of the uh, of the process so understanding what options you've got as a consultant engineer or a contractor to interface with the supply chain finally we'll end up with case studies uh, andrea so finally uh speakers i'm hosting most of the sessions unfortunately so you do have to put up with me for most of it but we do have laura bishop uh, the chair of the ground source heat pump association hosting i think four or five uh, sessions and tim baker from ba hydro solutions uh, he is hosting a specific session on geology uh, which we recorded last week uh, there's well over 100 years experience in the team that's pulled this together and so finally then when we're launching, uh, it will be available to sign up in spring. Uh, we are just recording the last sessions probably next week. One session I'm not happy with, I'm re-recording, uh, and the final session will be recorded next week. If you want to find out more, either email the Ground Source Heat Pump Association or have a look on the Ground Source Heat Pump Association website. And just to finally say, I would love to see you all in there. We've got nearly 100 people signed up already for the course. Uh, and so uh, we're very excited to start uh, training very soon. Thanks, Andrea. Back to you.
Mute. Andrea? Are you? You're on mute, Andrea. <laughs> bottom left, probably. If it's like mine, it's be down the bottom left. Got it. Right. You wouldn't let me go to it because I've got two screens running. I apologize uh -huh. for that. So, okay. So what of the future then? So we look at a heat pump city and, you know, does our program sort of make you think that that's a little bit more feasible? Um, I think we think so. Um, but we've got to have informed, robust education and training in place if we want to make tomorrow that better, cleaner world. And a heat pump city really, I think, should be the way forward um, and let these newly educated people be at the wheel of it, to be honest with you. Um, can we actually do it? Well, I think so. People have got to want to take the training on board that we've produced, the schools and colleges. It's very easy for them just to go down different routes because people don't always know what they're talking about when it comes to this which is why we want to, to get in there and, and teach the teachers um, about what to do and teach those who are using it, you know, your, your plumbers and, and this sort of thing. You know, let's, let's get in there and do it. So David Attenborough, he urged us to move towards renewables for many years and, and we really should be taking notice of what he's got to say. And so I'm just gonna finish with a, a very short clip from David just to end what we're doing. Earth, with its spectacular variety of creatures and landscapes, is now in danger. Just one thing, however, would be enough to halt climate change. If clean energy became cheaper than coal, gas or oil, fossil fuel would simply stay in the ground. The Global Apollo Programme is a positive and practical way to make that happen. We need an international program to discover breakthrough clean technologies. All the electricity we now require is available from limitless sources like wind and solar. Please support the Global Apollo program, the world's 10 year plan for cheaper, cleaner energy. And what I would say to that is please support us, the GSHPA, with what we're trying to do within the education and the training. Thank you.